Good morning, everybody. Today, as we continue on our series of uh, the live Zoom sessions on our environmental program, uh, this is the third of our uh, live series on uh, with experts and researchers. And uh, uh, our presenter today is Jackie Nunes. Uh, Jackie is um, is a frequent speaker of the international conferences in the press, and she is also featured in the award-winning documentary Straws. Jackie was the one who's created the No, no Plastic Straw Movement, which she founded in 2011 as a volunteer project for the Save Our Shores. In fact, um, she has been a presenter at many of our youth summits at the, at the International Youth Summit on Plastic Pollution. So good morning, Jackie. We're going to start the session by playing a trailer to the documentary, Open Your Eyes. Then she will start off with programs. Open your eyes. When did we become a plastic society? We got plastic bags, plastic water bottles, plastic straws, plastic cups, plastic wrap, plastic utensils, and plastic to-go containers. Plastic is a substance the earth cannot digest. And every bit of plastic that has ever been created still exists. Every day in the United States, we throw out almost 88,000 tons of plastic. Now what happens to plastic after you use it? Well, most of it goes into landfills. A portion gets into the water course and eventually ends up in the oceans. Recycling is not a sustainable solution. It's actually called downcycling because plastic never goes away. Consumption of disposable plastics has spiraled out of control. What is the number one thing plastic is made out of? Well, every year we use 17 million barrels of oil to make plastic water bottles. This is enough to fuel one million cars every year. Plastic pieces on the ocean surface now outnumber sea life six to one. Plastic makes up almost 90% of all trash floating on the ocean surface. 46,000 pieces of plastic per square mile. What effect does plastic have on human health? Plastic chemicals like BPA are absorbed by the body. Studies show that they alter hormones and disrupt the endocrine system. By refusing disposable plastic, you can improve the health of the ocean and the environment around us, including human health and animal health. Since 2009, Plastic Pollution Coalition has been building a global alliance to combat single-use disposable plastic. Our membership includes individuals, organizations, NGOs, businesses, campuses, and policymakers. We share resources, tools, and messaging with our coalition to develop a broad-based strategy to tackle the issue head on. We're working with universities, businesses, festivals, musicians, and more to create replicable and sustainable approaches to eliminating single-use disposable plastic. Plastic pollution is a global problem that humans alone have caused. We can do something about it. Please join our coalition. For more information, visit www.plasticpollutioncoalition.org. Remember, bring reusable items with you, like a water bottle, a cup, a bag, utensils. Refuse plastic when it's offered. And remember to say, no straw, please. Only purchase items in sustainable packaging, like glass and wax paper. My name is Jackie Nunez. I am the founder of The Last Plastic Straw. I think straws are the easy, tangible gateway issue to the bigger picture of plastic pollution. I think we have to be more responsible in how we use it and what we're using it for. It's not going away. The, the earth can't digest plastic. Plastic does not break down. It breaks apart into smaller and smaller pieces. I'm really excited to be part of Plastic Pollution Coalition. We have a lot of organizations, a lot of groups, a lot of schools, musicians, notable artists, a lot of people that are very passionate about this subject. 
and to have a coalition where we can share information and, and communicate and, and get this message out is just huge and we're better together. Slacktivism, it's actually a form of activism and it's, it's, it, it, it works in, in some respect where when you share online petitions or information with your friends, but you're not really, um, that it's called a slacktivist when you're just sharing things online, uh, but then that's pretty much the extent of your activism. And I have to say that I'm a self-described, I was a self-described slacktivist um, up until this point and uh, 10 years ago when I decided to do more. So I was this, um, a river guide, I was sea kayak guiding, I lived, I'd moved to California to uh, Santa Cruz but uh, part of my work is I did a lot of traveling and everywhere I saw uh, was just inundated with plastic pollution. So I started educating myself and volunteering for beach cleanups and sort of learning about the problem. So I founded The Last Plastic Straw in 2011 and it was a volunteer project for a local organization, Save Our Shores. Um, I just had a hunch that the, the plastic straw would be the tipping point issue, that it was something that people could get behind and to me it was the poster child of useless single-use plastic right it was a a, 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 a tool um, made out of single-use plastic that we most people didn't really need um, but yet I could see that it was literally in front of our noses and people were accepting it even though they weren't using it at home when they went out so I knew it was a good place to start but I also called it the gateway issue because I knew that people, once they start looking at plastic straws, they start to look at other things in their life. Um, and it proved to be right. Uh, it really was, the founding of the last plastic straw was never really about the straw. It was about single use plastic. And I really wanted to create behavior change uh, when I came up with this idea. Um, so I started talking about it, going, going around to local businesses here in Santa Cruz, uh, getting them to at least serve straws upon request. In California, we have a drought. I'm not sure if some of your co uh, countries have uh, drought seasons as well, but we have, um, seasonally, we have a drought in the summer. So one year we had actually a, a fairly long drought where we didn't get much rainfall. Um, and so we were mandated to only serve water upon request in restaurants. And that's where I got my aha moment because of that. I saw that how, how powerful a no ask was that they weren't giving people water automatically. People had to ask for it. And I thought if the straw could be the same thing, that that would be a win-win. It would be something that restaurants would do. And it's actually uh, telling them to, to do less, right? They don't have to buy as much stuff. And it was a win-win. We weren't telling them to change everything, uh, just, just only offered upon request. And um, so I was getting some traction, but then, and I became a member of Plastic Pollution Coalition as an, as an organization. And, um, but then in 2015, the turtle video went viral. And I'm not sure how many of you people saw the, the Straws film that we gave a link to, but the, the story behind that is when that went viral in the fall of 2015, everybody sent me that video. It blew up my inbox. And um, I call that the straw felt around the world. That was the last plastic straw moment for many people. And it really uh, got momentum. And then who was the person that had a whole website on plastic straws? Uh, but I was. And so everybody came calling me and said, hey, you know, we, we need to do something about these plastic straws. So anyway, so um, it really grew from there. The last plastic straw became um, a project of Plastic Pluchin Coalition, and it reinforced momentum around this worldwide movement. Um, I worked with a lot of um, different organizations and campaigns all around the world. Most of it was led by young people. There was a lot of youth that got involved with this. I knew it would be something that kids could really get behind. Um, I'm not sure... In the United States, a lot of times when a kid goes out to eat, they would come with like a sippy cup or a, a you know a little plastic cup with a straw in it, and whether a kid asks for it or not, even you know worse than it what an adult would do. So kids really embrace this, and they were really some of my biggest advocates for the plastic straw um, program. Um, so this is what we're doing with Plastic Pollution Coalition that. In the short term, we're encouraging eateries and everything to, to get away from plastic straws. But in the long run, it's this gateway issue that will mainly shift just basically everyone's behavior around single-use plastic. Um, so I used to call it the gateway issue because it's really leading to the plastic straws, even with policy. 
uh, to get, uh, you know, plastic bag, bag bands and stuff with straws. A lot of times that's how they're starting and, but they're getting to, you know, things like water bottles and everything else. So it's really, uh, tipping the, the issue. Uh, so I call it the gateway issue, but now I'm actually calling it the key to the door. So I feel like the, the, the plastic straw helps open up the, the conversation and open the door to the problem of plastic pollution. Now we have a lot of people in the room talking about plastic pollution, but I also feel that my work is just starting because now we really need to engage about the real solutions to plastic pollution. Um, so there was a lot of ways of change. So a lot of, a lot of the, the movement was happening with businesses first or a lot of business commitments. And I think there is still, um, if you do reach out in your community, it, it is good to start with business leaders who are uh, purchasing uh, single use plastic and serving it and speaking to them about alternatives. And I think it's always still a good way to start. Uh, policy happens, but it happens a little bit slower. Uh, but I do think we still need policy too, because a lot of businesses won't self-regulate. You have so these, these business leaders that really care, but it, the way the whole system set up, it's set up for cheap plastic. And so you're asking people to kind of sh do a system shift. Um, but I still think, you know, policy is really important to make sure that, you know, everyone's kind of playing by the same rules. That really helps. So when this, this wave of change started happening, uh, we had a lot of bans going on and the, the UK and the EU really kind of led as far as sweeping policy and government and everything with commitments at least. And now they're still trying to hash that all out, but there's been some big changes with that. 2018 was a really big year for plastic pollution. And I'm just giving you guys the background and kind of the history of, of the trajectory and why plastic pollution has now become kind of a hotbed issue, uh, you know, from when we first started to where we are now. Uh, 2018 was huge. We had a lot of uh, commitments by the, the U.S., U.K., EU. Uh, the, in, the, in the U.S. or in the Collins Dictionary, uh, single use was um, the word of the year, and Oxford's Dictionary it was toxic, and probably for more reasons than just uh, uh, plastic, but it was also the biggest uh, food story of the year was not about uh, food. It was actually about plastic straw bands. So that was a big year. It's kind of a trifecta for news that we were really in the news and getting a lot of momentum and people were calling it what it was, plastic pollution, which is a lot of what we do with Plastic Pollution Coalition is to get that messaging that, um, uh, you know, get the people uh, messaging around plastics in a real meaningful way so that people understand the problem. Um, and then the big story of the year was the fact that we weren't really ever really recycling plastic. Um, and as you know, or you probably learned too from Charles Moore that the problem, and maybe Deanna uh, spoke about this as well, but uh, the problem is we're not really recycling plastic, nor have we really effectively recycled plastic. And I call this uh, speaking truth to plastic because to really fit the definition of recycling, it should be able to recycle and move back. And actually what we're really only doing is downcycling it what, once at best into another product. And then end of life of that, it becomes, it becomes pollution. It, it, it ends up in our environment. And um, so our, our recycling rates are just dropping um, with China uh, refusing to take it, but it's also being imported to other countries, as you know. Um, so it really is a, a, a huge problem and, and recycle, we're not going to recycle our way out of it. We really need to do source reduction. So again, it's the, the rates are, are dropping yet. We're still, um, you know, there's still industries trying to sell this false hope and they're calling it now uh, chemical recycling or advanced recycling and basically our waste to energy as a solution. And a lot of those are false solutions. I call it just a transfer of, plastic pollution to plastic pollutants in our environment. It's just shifting the, the, the pollution that it's emitting. Um, so there was a huge report, um, actually this is dated, this was uh, I think two weeks ago that the, this uh, report came out about plastic to fuel and how that's not a, uh, a real solution. So if you guys are interesting to, interested in that, I can give uh, George the link and you guys can research it as well. But you can see there's a lot of false solutions happening really fast and um, trying to just keep, keep the, the emphasis, the plastic uh, uh, producers 
want to keep the e emphasis on waste and not so much about production because they still want to continue to make more plastic. Um, there is no way, as you know, we just keep making it. There, um, plastic production is, is up in a time that we should be making less of it. And, and the huge market for it, the largest market is single use packaging. Um, part of the problem too, and why it's um, considered so cheap is, and especially in the United States, is that we subsidize the fossil fuel industry. So a lot of the subsidies were actually helping this industry um, you know, make a profit on this. But if we really factored in the real cost of plastic, it would be a lot more expensive. And as you probably have gathered, it's a huge source of greenhouse gases. I mean, plastic, if you think about it, the feedstock is, is the petrochemical industry. It's an extractive industry and it's a gross polluter at every stage of its existence. So it really is a global um, crisis and it's a big contributor to climate change. So it really is part of the climate change um, conversation that we need to have when we talk about system sh shift and how we're going to um, really bring down a lot of this, this warming and, and change happening in our environment. And plastics is going to be always part of that, that conversation. So we're, we're moving more towards a system shift of re, refuse and reuse. And uh, this is my brother and he has a restaurant in Florida. And this is a quote, I interviewed him when COVID hit and we talked about um, what I asked him what he thought about regulations and policy. And he said, believe it or not, we really do uh, welcome, um, you know, the government banning because basically he says it, it, it puts it on, on a level playing field that, uh, you know, you wouldn't have an advantage over somebody else or be, or basically have to pay more money for an item if you want to do the right thing and have a reusable um, system, whereas another restaurant would get away with doing all the single use plastic. If everybody was playing by the same rules, it would bring the cost down. And he said he, he welcomed that, you know, he just, he said that we would do better if we had uniform policy on this. So this was his quote. Um, but basically he said that, you know, businesses will react. And one of the things he told me too, if there was a ban enact, enacted like tomorrow, he said he would be getting a phone call like, you know, in two weeks or you know, two weeks time, he would have people showing up at his restaurant with new products. He would have people calling him and cause they would just shift. The market just shifts with the, with the demand. And right now the market is all geared towards plastics, but that could shift too. So I really feel that this is just mostly a, a system shift that in which we need to shift away from this profit model of um, quote unquote disposability, where I call waste and single use to more of a reuse and more of a regenerative resilient model of doing business. So these are my tips and tricks. So if you uh, reach out to um, local leaders that are making these decisions in your community, or even if it's a, a, you know, someone in charge of your school who's purchasing all of the materials or um, where you want to shift away from single use plastic where you can, is you need to um, stay positive. We, the, the, the thing I always tell people is that we've got truth on our side. Um, I don't really consider it. I think it is a, it is a fight to, in some respect for some communities to really, um, you know, deal with this frontline communities and end of uh, line communities, but it also is a system shift. And it is a, a t to me, it's a design flaw that we're using plastic for single use. And I really feel that we can redesign our future, whether it's the, the, the systems to the materials to um, even how we are using uh, these materials in what way. Um, I always recommend using the word plastic often and liberally when you speak about it, especially I saw that a lot with plastic straws when people got involved in it, they'll say, Hey, we're, we're for banning straws. And I was like, no, I never was for banning straws. There's people that need straws. I'm okay. I'm okay with, you know, uh, providing straws for those who need it, but you're not going to serve it to hundred percent of the people if only 1% need a plastic straw or any kind of straw. Um, but I do use the word plastic. So what I'm against is the material um, because the straw is just what that material is molded into. It could be a utensil. It could be a, you know, a, a water ball. It could be a cup. So um, be specific when you speak about it. And that way people are hearing it over and over. It's, it's not that we're against the item. It's against, we're against plastic for single use. So especially in policy, when you're speaking or to the press or to 
decision makers, you know, it's plastic straw, plastic fork, plastic utensils, plastic water bottle. I even want to say plastic polystyrene now. So it gets in people's head that it's, it's plastic that we're having a problem with um, using it in the way that we're doing it. It's really important to stand up, uh, speak up and, and, and show up to some of these, uh, whether it's a, like for us, we have a city council um, where I live and um, it really does matter. I was really, I mean, I voted, but I wasn't really political and it really, I, I get kind of annoyed as an outdoor enthusiast and, and, and someone who works outside uh, the fact that we politicize the environment. Cause to me, the, the environment is not a political issue. We all have the right to clean air, water, and soil. Right. And, the fact that we politicize it actually, I think, benefits the polluters because then everyone can just talk about it. Um, I, to me, there's no excuse for polluting the planet for profit, I mean, period. So the fact that we're talking about it kind of annoys me, but here we are. We do need policy. We do need these changes. And I do, I, I do have hope because I see people show up and I'm realizing that politics are not action. Politics are the reaction to our action. But it won't happen until we speak up and stand up and, and, and show up. And I think that's really encouraging to see what's happening with the climate uh, movement with the Fridays for the Future. And it's really a, a real testament of, of kids really speaking up and the youth um, showing up and speaking up. And they need to hear those voices. Because most of the time, politics, these guys that are making or these women that are making these decisions, they're, they're listening to the business aspect of the businesses and not really... Uh, they don't, they don't hear the, you know, the general public most of the time. We're too busy, you know, we're working all the time. We're not, you know, we're just trying to survive. So it's really important, um, whether it's through art or through um, letter writing, through um, speaking, through music, whatever you're, you're good at in your communications, um, really kind of find your superpower, what you're, you're good at, or it's even more fun if you can do it with a group. Um, ways to really get the, the word out as you as you learn about this this issue, whatever issue it is that you want. It doesn't even have to be plastic; it could be anything else that's going on in the world. But I really encourage you guys to do that. One of my favorite um, quotes about art is that uh, it says, "Art doesn't change people, or doesn't change the world. Art changes people, and people change the world." And I think that that's really important. So you really got to know your audience and really connect with them. So I think that's great. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's always fun with other people. If you find other groups or individuals that are working on the problem or even the kind of, um, uh, other issues that kind of might, you might cross pollinate, like say environmental, um, justice issues along with climate change and plastics, it's all relative and it's, um, it's, you have more power in numbers and also in ideas and ways that you can get the message across. Uh, if you have any, like, public works department or people dealing with the waste, it's really good to talk to them and see what systems there are. And a lot of times they're, they're your ally, allies as well because they want to solve this problem because they're dealing with all this waste and they're having a problem dealing with all this plastic waste. So it's always good to, to, to reach out. Um, if there's any kind of certification programs, I mean like Surfrider has one for a green restaurant. Some, some towns even have it, you know, for green businesses or your local government might have something that will really do incentives for businesses to do greener practices. So basically our, this is our, our vision, right? We wanna have the zero waste values of reusability and durability in our products that we use so that we don't, we're not being so wasteful. Uh, we wanna reduce it at the source and in, in the use and production. It's not so much about you know, dealing with the waste but that will, come we have a lot of waste out there but we really want to uh, do upstream solutions and that's what we're really striving towards and putting our focus on is, is really a source reduction of this um, the packaging and goods we want it to be designed to be useful through their existence um, it's really uh, exciting to see some of the stuff that's coming out with seaweed um, so if you're if you are doing there are, it's going to be some packaging that that's going to be that they'll be wrapping food and stuff in with film made of seaweed and it has about a two week life so far, right? You can last two weeks. But honestly, if you think about it, 
I think a lot of our, our uh, answers are going to be regional, right? I mean, it's, it's better if you can have fresher food anyway. So I'd rather have packaging, especially for food. that's not going to be toxic. It's going to be somewhat, you know, um, compostable and, and bioavailable. Um, it's not going to harm the food, but yet when it's done, it will um, be part of our soil or, or end up, you know, adding nutrients back, right? More of a regenerative thing. Um, and I don't want to be eating any food that's older than two weeks old anyways, right? You have a higher nutrition value, so you'd be getting it more local, but they would still be able to you know, package it and protect it. And you would have, and the, and the money stays local, right? So you have fresher food, more nutritional value, and, and you'll be supporting your local economy. And I really feel like that's a lot of the answers to this, a lot of this industrialized food systems and a lot of the shipping and the packaging that goes along with it. It's a whole series of events and things that we can you know, plug away at. So yeah, so we, we look at all the different, uh, like I said, Plastic Pollution Coalition, we have everything from businesses to schools, to musicians, to government uh, officials, you know, policymakers, a part of our coalition. And that's, that's we wanna work on, on all of it with the circular system and all the, the working uh, components of it. And so it's gonna take us all but we do look to, to work us all um, collaboratively to solve this problem. We want to have everybody thrive in a, a global ecosystem. So that's kind of like our end. Might seem lofty, but it's, it's actually not. It's just how we all should be living to, uh, uh, you know, for, for future generations and in a way that everybody's um, thriving and, and healthy. That should be all of our goals. So yeah, so I encourage you guys, you guys, you can uh, join us. Um, you can join as an individual. If you go to plasticpollutioncoalition.org and you look under coalition, there's a little tab there. You can join as an individual. You can join as um, a, a group, a school group. If you, if you start a campaign, you can do that too as an organization or even a, a business can join. And what that does is that gives you um, access, if, you know, except some, if you're a business or an organization, and you get accepted, that gives you access to a lot of other organizations and, and people working on the same problem, this, uh, this uh, global alliance. But what it also does is um, you can sign up for our newsletter so you'll stay on top of the, you know, all the, the latest of what's going on. Um, we have a global legislative toolkit. So if you really do get into policy, uh, that's kind of like a living document, actually. So if you're interested in that, you can get on that. And if you see some good policy coming out from your country that you want to share, it's a global uh, plastics legislative toolkit. So each each uh, new policy ends up getting better and better. So we're we're having this this tool on our website, so people can contribute to that. Uh, a lot of um, you know local governments are getting good language for policy out of that and and good ideas. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of tools and we're doing now with COVID, we're doing webinars all the time. We're going to have another webinar coming up, I think on the 27th, but George, I can send you the link to that if the kids sure. are interested in that. And uh, we just had one with youth with all these, these young kids. It was, it was great. Um, so yeah, I think the next one's on microplastics. So if awesome. anyone's in, into that, we can, uh, yeah, we can let you know. Thank you. So with that, I think that's, that's it. Okay, so thank you, uh, Jackie, and um, I actually wanted to let you know that uh, we do have two teachers, in fact. Uh, one oh, is uh, from uh, the Brookhaus International School in Kenya. The other one is the is from, an, I think it's Hotep International School from Egypt. And oh, I, that's, an, yeah, so her name is Yomna, and uh, she is actually working with students specifically on plastic pollution. And I believe this, uh, you know, the, the resources that um, we were talking about would definitely be helpful for them. And this is the first time that actually they are looking into something on a global level. So now I would like uh, to know if anybody would like to, or rather I would, uh, Jackie, as from your side, uh, how would you want students if, let's say, if they are in the high school and if they're in the middle school, how can they be involved? And these are specifically for the two teachers before I go to the university students. Okay. Um, 
well, high school students, I encourage you. Um, there's actually a lot of the uh, great global organizations too that are part of our coalition. We have Heirs to Our Oceans. Um, this is a great a youth-led organization. Um, they have a lot of initiatives. Uh, Algalita has a way, Wayfarers um, Society, and you can get on there and meet other kids that are, um, you know, George probably met them too from our uh, International Youth Conference. And it's, so what this is- way, It's a Wayfinder, I believe is what it is. What did yeah, I say, right. Wayfair? Yeah, Wayfinder, yeah. yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I keep calling it that. Um, yeah, so Wayfinder. And so with that, it was a spinoff because we, we found a need after we had this, this, uh, uh, this global youth conference that the kids wanted to stay connected and they wanted, and, and kids were at different levels of what they were doing in their towns and they wanted to learn from other things. So there's actually some what they call waypoints and you can do different things like a home audit. Um, so you can look at your own home and and see like what it is you guys are buying every day or what you're what's coming into your home what's what's packaged in plastic and then think about can we substitute that with something else is there a different way we can do this and if not is there could you write a letter to this this company maybe it's something that you really like and they can package it better or different you can start to uh, do it that way um or you look in your community and you do you lead you know, cleanups and, and, and awareness. And, and then a lot of people with that will do, uh, you know, with a big enough group, you can get the trash together and make a, a you know, sculpture or something and to, to draw attention and awareness. I've seen kids do that. But it really is kind of the sky's the limit. It's, it's, it's really what you're passionate in and what you want to um, uh, focus on. If you choose you know, plastic straws are always a good entry point because it's a great way that people don't feel really threatened by that. A lot of people don't need straws. And so it's a great um, kind of a, a thing to, to cut out and it, it starts the conversation, right? Um, and No Straw November's coming up. So you can participate in that. I, I celebrate all the plastic-free holidays. So it's always a, a, an opportunity to say, hey, you know, this is No Star November or Plastic Free July, and it was an opportunity to, to people to try to, to curtail their, their plastic habits. Um, yeah, high school, it, I mean, I'm not sure you guys aren't so much in school because you're doing it probably all virtual, but a lot of times it's really effective for kids. I always say start where you are. So it's like you, it's kind of hard to clean anyone else's house until you've cleaned your own. And so I, I always like to look at my own personal footprint first and then go out from there. And so you could start, you know, in your own home, but also look at your community, you know, look at where you're um, engaging in every, every day and see where those changes can be made. Um, there's a lot of resources. I mean, we could just, I mean, I, I, we can connect you with whatever. It's, it's always good to know like what it is that you're interested in and that makes it, a lot more fun and easier. It's, it's tough. I mean, you can't really, awesome. and I, and I, especially for kids, high school, I want people to be um, inspired and excited and want to do, you know, something. And it, it could be materials, right? There's uh, uh, looking at different materials like uh, seaweed or different uh, types of materials or systems or, or reuse systems. Um, that you would want to employ. So uh, that depends if you go on the science route, if you go on the art, if you go in the communications route, policy. There's a lot, actually. Thank you. And uh, in fact, yeah, some of them actually are getting disconnected and connected back. So that's that's a challenge that we have to face through. Now, uh, any 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 participant who would like to ask any questions, uh, we would uh, be very happy about it. Um, if uh, you know anyone who'd like to even text it on the on the on the chat window, that would also chat. be fine. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Uh, if Thaddeus, would you like to share, or would you like to share? I mean, anything in that? Thank you very much. My internet is really bad. I've just got uh, okay. kicked out, and uh, I was trying to come back. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Jackie, for the wonderful presentation. That's really insightful. And a lot of good things you are doing as the last plastic straw together with the 
with the coalition for mm -hmm. the coalition that you are you're also part of. Um, yeah, so I missed a bit, a bit of the, the presentation, but I, I got the, the, the gist of the, the whole thing there. Um, yeah, just to comment that I think the coalition uh, approach brings together, um, you know, policy makers, you know, influencers, and that is really a good approach, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because I believe like it is here in Kenya that uh, um, government is, 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 um, is trying, but they haven't really done what they ought to have done. Uh, business people uh, are part of the problem. But I think um, if, if, especially in Africa, if, if uh, politicians uh, could actually uh, lead uh, in front, then a lot can be achieved. Uh, for example, when the government of Kenya banned the single-use plastics, um, people quickly adapted and found alternative ways of you know, doing shopping. Uh, that was just a, bit, a, a, a small percentage of it, you know. So, yes, it is everyone uh, to, to, to play their part. Yeah, so I, I, I really like to uh, keep in touch, of course, uh, uh, as always. So that we find ways that we can have ideas for the young people in school, the high school people. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you very much, and I really appreciate um, uh, what I've learned in this session. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jackie, I wanted to ask you one question. Uh, yes. The participants would they be given any kind of certific certificates for joining the coalition? I'm not sure if we do a certification. I, I have one that I give, like if someone, you know, I've done it for schools, if they've gone plastic straw free, I do a little certification. I mean, we could probably put something together um, if they do something, but you know, what they do is we'll get a, you'll get a confirmation letter. Mm -hmm. um, and if you wanted to, when well, I think we'll even ask you, I don't think they automatically will send you um, like the newsletter or things like that. They'll ask you, would you like to be uh, registered to, to get the newsletter? And then that's, uh, that's every month we have a newsletter. So you see what's going on in the plastics realm and, and uh, from all over, we have a lot of a coalition members uh, uh, highlighted in there and okay. it talks about webinars and everything. So, okay. Now, there's another another re, uh, question that I might like to ask because a, a few of the students actually are university students. Is okay. there a way that uh, they could join some internships in Europe because most of them are from Africa? So I'm wondering if there if you have any contacts where they can actually go to Europe uh, for an internship as part of the plastic uh, pollution system. Well, yeah, I mean, we have, like I said, we have a, a broad coalition. We have a lot of European organizations working on the, on the problem, um, anywhere from Netherlands to the UK to Spain, Italy. I mean, we have a lot of, so it depends on where they're at and, and what they're interested in. And we can, we can, if they're part of our coalition, we can connect them for sure. There's that's some. That's something our the our students would definitely be interested, especially students from Tunisia or from Morocco yeah. or Egypt. You know, the, uh, if we could try to arrange some kind of internships uh, uh, yeah. in Europe, and if we can try to con make some connections to them, that would definitely. We can do be a, yeah, we can do a search in our database, and it'd be dependent, like if they're interested in. Um, you know, we have ones in Europe that are really into like the, the chemicals and packaging um, are different aspects of plastics. And so it depends on what they're interested in and how we can match them. You know, but George, before I forget, um, we just launched on Thursday a three, uh, 360 film. Like if you have, it's virtual, it's like okay. a virtual thing if you had the headsets, uh -huh. but you don't need it. You can also, if you have your phone and move, it's like you're swimming in the water. Uh -huh. And it's called uh, Sea Change, S-E-A. And um, it'll be available for free till October 22nd. And so that just reminded me, I just wanted to let people know, I'll send you the link to it. Okay. And it's a lot of fun, but they talk about basically, and it's, it's, it's narrated by Tim Robbins. We're getting it 
I know we have it in German. We're getting different languages uh, of it as well as it goes on. But it's like an immersive experience. So it would be a great tool to show people like the impacts of plastic. And but most of it was filmed in Indonesia where you saw the uh, plastic in the water. So thank you very much. I guess I'll follow uh, up with that. Yeah, I, you guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, any, any questions from any of the participants? Okay, uh, Nikhil, is there anything that you would like to add? Well, the, you mentioned the Wayfinder. Um, yes. I'm not super familiar with it. I am on the board of Agalita. In fact, I'm a past president of Agalita. And mm -hmm. we've developed the Wayfinder program to, as you said, to facilitate some of this kind of direct interaction and training and actually accumulating, accumulating what we call cairns, which are yeah. mounds of rocks that, that, you know, you can earn 50, uh, five cairns or 10 or 20, depending yeah. on. So that's something you may want to look into that. No, I'm sure you've seen it, but uh, the other part. So I just, uh, yeah, Doshi just sent it to me. I think it's incredible. Um, and we, we want to uh, work with, with them as well and see if we can get the, I was asking him if maybe part of the currents for the, the policy part, uh, if there was a way to in, in, integrate the global legislative toolkit um, as the kids get further in where, you know, where they get involved in policy. Um, yes. And if there's well, a way to do that. Certainly it's the ongoing nature of the involvement. If, if it's just one time, that's good. But if they can continue to build upon that in their careers, then uh, I think we can expand yeah. the Wayfinder. It sounds like the Wayfinder, yeah, like they're, they're going to add more things. Like this is the first you know, round of the Cairns and everything. Okay. And, and Doshi, and that's what I also think too, I want to uh, send Doshi the link to that uh, 360 film because they do have a part where they have them uh, um, like swimming in the garbage patch um, and have them see that in Indonesia too but just have the it's just kind of a fun that would be a, a fun well, not fun but you know interesting Karen to, to, to get this immersive experience and so that they could even describe that um, so that, that can evolve into kind of an ongoing blog between the various Wayfinder participants and they mm -hmm. can talk about what they've experienced and share methods of, mm -hmm. of mitigation and prevention. So that's, yeah. I just want to Thank put you, a little man. plug in for Wayfinder. No, I think it's great. And I think that's great for, yeah, I think that's a, it's a great tool, especially you know, high school. Um, you know, it's been much needed. We've been talking about it with Algalita when we go, when we have the International Youth Summit, and so I've been hearing about it and just the, the iteration. So it was great to see it finally and have it come out. I'm yeah. excited. And since we cannot have the in-person summits too much anymore, this yeah. we hope will be the, as you say, people find solutions to work around all these problems. So this is exactly. Well, I thank you so much. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, we have almost come to the end of the session. Uh, I appreciate uh, those who, are, who joined us, well, we, we did have, uh, you know, a new school that was uh, from Egypt, so that's a good part of it. Uh, unfortunately, okay. yes, uh, but every every sessions we we do have a new country that is joining in, so that's a good good part, good thing. So, good. yeah, thank you, Jackie. I really appreciate your time and that's staying up late. Nice. Okay, nice. and and I also want to wish all the participants who joined in early morning at different times. Uh, you know, it's been great. Yes, we would like to, uh, you know, continue on with the good work. Our, our focus here was specifically looking at single-use plastics, and we were, we were looking at uh, the cuisines and the food that we make at home. So that's something that we are still focused on. And yep, yeah, uh, straw is definitely part of that, uh, you know, uh, uh, whether it is college students or school students, wherever they go, that's something that they they should try uh, to you know kind of for uh, an advocate uh, the advocacy on no straw, no plastic straw. I'm not talking about specifically the word straw, but plastic straw. It, it's a good starting point. It's a good uh, way to start a conversation with someone. Um, I always say too that even the bad bad 
press is good press. So even when I get like, I've had people like on the height of it all, like kind of troll me on the internet and be like, Oh, you know, well, like, straws are only like 0.2% in the ocean. Mm-hmm. And what about plastic water bottles? What about my, and I say, yeah, what about that? That is a problem too. It starts the conversation. So even when they're trying to, well, you know, they start saying all, and, and what the great thing about it is that it's not, it's not good or bad. It's, you know, it, it brings up the conversation. It gets people going and talking about the problem. And that was always the intention. And I just think it's something that's tangible. It's, it's easy to, to start that way, but then it never, it never stops there. Cause I really do believe, and I really feel that as we talk about this, we should have some compassion because it's really is a whole system that's been built around this, that we have to go against and, and change. Um, but I also feel that, that I have faith because I feel no one really sets out to pollute the planet. We're just not aware. And once we raise that awareness and that's, that's, I always saw the light bulb with the, with the plastic straw. When people think about it, they start thinking naturally about other things that they can change that that single use plastic. And it really does affect them. Um, Some people slower than others, but it doesn't matter. It just starts that you got to meet people where they are. And so that's what I really encourage you to. Yeah. So. Thank you so much. I guess, I mean, there are students who are actually getting ready to go to this, to their classes. So we yes. don't want to re- take much of the time. Uh, once yeah. again, thank you so much. We would be putting the record recording of this in our channel, Green Corner Computer Channel. So we, you know, that's something that we would like uh, students to watch um, later on. And those who missed it can also watch it. So okay. thank, thank you once again. And we will stay in touch. Have a wonderful right. day. Thanks, Jackie. Thank thanks you. Okay. All thanks right. for all the participants you. too. Take care. Bye bye. Right. Good night. Good morning. Good night. Yeah. Good morning. Good night. Yeah. Good <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew.